Our scripture for today's moment of meditation is going to be taken from Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. And it reads as such. <clears throat> the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost. To the swarming locust, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the cutting locust. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Once again, you will have all the food you want, and you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Beloved, for our brief time together, if I could lend your ear on the topic from desolation to restoration. From desolation to restoration. My brothers and my sisters, I have 15 minutes, 15 minutes to offer you a brief word of meditation. This is a very quick flight, so don't blink, don't check your text, because you might just actually miss it. Are you ready for departure? Are you ready for departure? Well, then let's prepare for takeoff. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Atia Love, and I am your chief flight attendant for this evening. On behalf of Tabernacle Airlines, welcome aboard flight 313. With nonstop service from Joel 25 to Joel 26, our flight time will be approximately 15 minutes at an altitude of high Holy Ghost meters. At this time, make sure your seats are set back, make sure your tray tables are in full upright position, and that your seat belt is correctly fastened. Also, your portable devices must be turned off or set to airplane mode until an announcement is made upon arrival. Thank you and enjoy the flight. When you are leaving from one place and going to another, how many times have you heard that announcement? When you are going from one location unto the next, it sometimes requires your undivided attention. When you are leaving from one place and going to another, it sometimes requires that you put away those things that might cause a distraction for you. When you are leaving one place and going to another, beloved, it also requires protection. You see, my brothers and sisters, in this message for you today, I just stopped by for now the 13 minutes that I have left to remind you that God has a promise of restoration. In Joel, in the chapter of Joel, we see here the promise of God taking the people from one place to another, going from a place of desolation to a place of restoration. Somebody say restoration, restoration. But in order for a thing to be restored, something Thing has to be taken away from that particular thing. For how can anything be restored or how can anything be brought back to place or replaced if nothing was ever taken away from the first place? You see, Joel here, a prophet or a priest in Jerusalem, the capital of Judah, stressed three things to the people in his foretelling. And those three things I'm going to share with you on today. God judges the sin of people. God demands repentance from the people. God gives restoration to the people. I'll say it for you again. God judges the sin of people. God demands repentance from the people. God gives restoration to the people. Or if you want it, you could tag it kind of a little something like this. You could take those points and you could say when your life is in ruin or in despair or in dismay, your ruins require repenting. Your repenting makes way for God's restoring. You see, God judged their sin in the book of Joel, and he sent an army of locusts. He sent an army of locusts, a swarm of locusts, if you will, to eat up the crops and eat up the land. You see, locusts, very tiny in nature, resembling that of a grasshopper, forced the people to be in a place of desolation. Everything was destroyed. Everything was in demise. Everything was in despair. We found ourselves or they found themselves in a place of barrenness, emptiness, or destruction. You see, God judges the sin. Or rather, like a parent should, he disciplines his children in love. Think of a time, think of a time when you yourself were a child. Or perhaps you yourself were raising your own children. There were rules, I presume, in that particular house. 
And if you broke a rule, there were, I presume, consequences to you than breaking that particular rule. For how can you go out in the world of rules if at first you are not understanding them at home? Somebody say it starts in the home. It starts in the home. Now, if you were like me as a child, if you were like Dr. Love as a child, you you kind of rarely experience those consequences because, I mean, I, I, I was a good child. My mother's here. She can vouch for it yourself. I, I, I was a good child. I listened. I followed the rules simply because they were the rules. Now, if you were anything like my cousin or anything like my son, uh, perhaps you kind of tested the rules just a little bit. You tested the rules. You broke them just to see exactly what would happen. What would mommy do or daddy do if you broke the rule? And you learned very, very quickly that there are indeed consequences for your actions. Now, beloved, come here. If God is our father, then why do we think that only the good experiences are connected to him? If God is truly your father, does he not also discipline you in love? You see, you keep going against what it is that you know he told you to do and or not do over and over and over again. And as a parent who loves and protects, what exactly do you think God is going to do? Well, in verse 25, he says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, but my great army, which I sent to you. You see, oftentimes, whenever something perceivably negative happens, it's not always the devil being busy. You ask somebody, well, girl, how are things going? Oh, child, the devil is busy. Oh, child, the devil is busy. You see, sometimes, maybe a little bit of time, whenever something distasteful happens, it's not always life just lifing. They say, oh, how you doing? Oh, life is life in the day. Life is life in a day. Sometimes, sometimes, in fact, it is God's love and patience waiting for your repentance. And that's the good news. That's connected to the good news because for the people were in a place of desolation. They were in the place of desolation. But the, 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 the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible tells us that God demanded repentance from the people. Come here, little Atiyah. I see you broke the rule. You did something distasteful. Now come here and tell me what you've done and go say, I'm sorry. Who, me? I, I, I broke a rule. It wasn't even that big of a rule. I, I, I'm not saying sorry. Little Atiyah goes about her business, goes about her life and ignores her father. Father says, I, listen, I have greater in store for you. You're not listening to what I'm telling you. I need for you to repent. R repent? Me? As if I, I did something wrong. Who, me? Me being... <laughs> No, God, go get somebody else to do it. But you see, the word tells us that in order for your circumstances, I need you to catch this one. In order for your circumstances to change, your confession requires a consciousness of your condition and a changing of your character. In order for your circumstances to change, your confession requires a consciousness of your own condition and a changing of your own character. Beloved, I just stopped by for the next five minutes that I have left to let you know that you cannot get to verse 26. You cannot get to the place of restoration without your own repentance. And if you're going to walk in it, then you might as well own it. If you're going to do your stuff, then you might as well own your stuff. Repent unto the Lord with all your heart and with all your might. And through your repentance, God promises here to take you from desolation to restoration. He promises to take you from emptiness to fullness. He promises to take you from being barren, broken, and busted to being blessed bountiful and better only for the betterment of God's kingdom you see that's a word for somebody here today I'm about to go down and sit in my seat but ladies and gentlemen as we start our descent and as we prepare for landing I just came by on this 13th day of this third month 313 the number three representing completeness the number three representing divine wholeness and on this 13th day of this third month my brothers and sisters when your life is in ruin when your life is in despair when your life is in dismay your ruins require repenting and your repenting makes way for God's restoring help me Holy Ghost but where my brothers and sisters the question is but where is your praise you see, do I need to remind you that there is power in your praise? Do I need to remind you that there is power in your praise and that life and death, oh, you know the word, it lies in your tongue. You see, verse 26 says, you can have what you want 
and you will praise the Lord your God. You can have what you want and there's an and there, there's an and there, there's an and there. And if there's any English teachers in the room, you know that and is a coordinating conjunction. It's a coordinating conjunction, meaning that the two actually go together. Oh, they go together and they go together real bad, meaning that the two have to be coordinated. The two have to be connected in their coordinating. So the word says you can have what you want and you will praise the Lord your God. Oh, y'all not hearing me. So I'll just leave you with this. I'm going to sit down. We all recall the movie, The Wizard of Oz. We all know the movie, The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is a classic story, a classic story about a little girl named Dorothy. We all know Dorothy. Dorothy had experienced a tornado. Her home was destroyed. She experienced great loss. She experienced great suffering. And her only desire, her only wish, was for her to find her way back home. Help me, Holy Ghost. The whole movie, the whole play, is a journey about how it is that this little girl, this little child, is going to find her way back home from desolation to restoration. You're going to catch it in a minute. And if you can recall, when she finally made it to the end, the great eyes could not help her. The one that she thought all her patience relied into, he could not help her. He could not save her, but enters Glinda. Enters Glinda, the good witch. The Glinda, the good witch, tells Dorothy this one simple thing. This one simple thing, all you have to do is click your heels three times. Click your heels three times. Three times on this 13th day of this third month. Dorothy, click your heels just three times and command the slippers to take you home. And command the slippers to take you home. Open up your mouth and say it three times. Open up your mouth and say it three times. Open up your mouth and say it three times so you can be restored. Tell them, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Click, click, I'm going home. God, I love you. God, I love you. God, I love you. Click, click, I'm going home. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Click, click, I'm going home. You can have what you want, but the connection is in your praise. And if I don't praise them, they said the rocks are going to cry out. And I don't know about you, but I don't need no rocks crying out for me. For surely I tell you, if they hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. You can have what you want, but the connection is in your mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually, not sometimey, not half timey, but continually be in my mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just been cleared for landing. Please make sure your praise is in its full upright position. Make sure your faith is securely fastened, and all your old desolation baggage is stowed underneath. We have just arrived at Restoration Airport, where the local time is now 718, and the temperature was like fire shot up in my bones. We thank you for flying Tabernacle Airlines, and we hope to see you aboard another flight soon and very soon. <laughs>